hello lovely so welcome back to the channel in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to make this structured sleeve using crinoline i have a tutorial on my channel where i used boning and hard stay to make a structured sleeve but for this tutorial today we'll be using crinoline so i have two types of crinoline here on the table i have this wider softer one and i also have another one which is the normal crinoline we use for our peplums and other lovely things we create so this one is six inches is wide right but it's softer than the normal uh, crinoline that we use for peplum so you can see from touching it you see even from looking at it from here you see how wobbly it is that be, that is because it is a uh, very soft now i have this other one which is stronger and it's 2.5 inches um wide and you can see when i stretch it it doesn't really stretch out that much unlike this one that really stretches out so one is um thicker than the other one now for the sake of this tutorial i'll be using the lighter one and that is because the structure i want to make i want it to be wide so that's why i'm using the one with the wider um measurement so i'll be using the white one okay so most of the times i use this white one for bright dolls and you can find this one um at where you buy uh, where people that sell um fascinators buy their um materials from so just go to any shop that sells tailoring materials and all those craft materials and ask them for a uh, wide crinoline okay for people that make a uh, fascinators hats and all of those things so you would find it there and i'm also sure that you'll find the thicker ones now for my fabric and uh, my fashion fabric i folded into two now remember the width of my crinoline is six inches so for the width of the fabric i'm going to fold i need to fold six and a half okay six inches which is the width of my crinoline then half inch and um, seam allowance to couple it together so that's what i'll do i'm going to fold six inches then the length of um, my fabric is going to be the measurement from my uh, front to back okay so you know the way we usually position this structured sleeve so you're going to measure from your front to the back from your mid front to the mid back right so when i took this measurement on my client i got 21 inches and and i'm adding an extra eight inches eight to ten inches to it so it will give me 31 or 30 three inches depending on which figure i decide to add so i'm adding eight inches to it so i'm adding 10 inches to it so i have 31 all right so um i have 31 right here on my on the fabric and the width of the fold is six and a half inches the length is 31 inches as you can see 31 inches right so like i said the across front or the mid front to mid back was 21 inches but i'm adding extra 10 inches and that's because her bicep is 8 inches so you add that and you leave an extra allowance for ease and all of that so that's why i have an extra 10 inches added to the uh, mid front to the mid back measurement so i hope that is sorted out so then i'll go ahead and mark six and a half across the length of the fabric like so so that I will have uh, a straight strap of fabric. Then I'll go cut that out. So you can see me cutting out the excess from my fabric. Now the next thing you would do would be to go ahead and attach your interfacing to this fabric. So you could use your hair stay, your gum stay, or even your peplum stay. Either one that you know suits, is suitable for you. But the harder the uh, interfacing, the more structure you're going to have. Now for this tutorial, I wouldn't be adding any interfacing because I'm just making this for a tutorial, and I need my interfacing for other uh, things that I want to do. So I'll just show you. you would see how structured this would come out. So but go ahead for your own to attach your interfacing you can use s stay gum stay peplum stay heart stay color stay any say that you can lay your hands on body harder the more structure you'd get now i've measured the length of my fabric remember it is 31 so on my crinoline i'm going to cut out 31 inches now for this crinoline like i said i'm cutting out 31 inches so you go ahead and measure then when you're measuring your crinoline don't drag it don't pull it just put your pull your your tape okay across the the crinoline then cut out but don't stretch or pull the crinoline it is super stretchy and it's going to give you false measurements so once you just roll out your crinoline please i even tried using the other crinoline to cut out but i figured that it's going to it was going to you know move around so it's better to measure so i'll just go ahead and place my tape 
okay so you can see the way i'm just moving only the tape pulling the tape across the crinoline but i'm not pulling the crinoline itself so i'm cutting 31 inches now you can cut as much as you want i'll just go ahead and cut out five pieces okay so you can go do as much as six seven eight in uh, pieces you can do as little as less as four pieces depending on how much interfacing you used to stabilize the fabric so that is the trick here if you stabilize the fabric enough you're going to have enough structure right so if you use paper stay or, or air stay you know that you need much uh, crinoline but if you use color stay or peplum stay the harder stays you need a lesser crinoline so that's the trick behind it now because i'm not using any and i still want this to be structured i just cut out five pieces now what i'll do is to go ahead and stitch this together okay along the four sides so i'm going to start from the edge of the crinoline okay along uh the width i'm going to stitch the five pieces together just to stabilize it and hold it together while i go ahead and sew along the sides so you want to pick them one after the other so you have the five pieces combined then you place them underneath your presser foot and go and run a straight stitch along uh, the width of the fabric or the crinoline sorry now guys if you're watching till now this is learn to sew with noni and here on this channel where i upload sewing tutorials and pattern drafting on everything relating to fashion designing uh, once in a while or once in a week so if you you know like that type of content please consider subscribing to the channel and like this video and other videos so that other people would get to see you see what i did there other other people other videos other right so uh, and if you're new here you're welcome i hope you love it i hope you stay with us and enjoy the beautiful tutorials that i post here i love you you're welcome to the channel right so for the sides i'm going to keep stitching making sure that i'm having the five pieces okay the five pieces of crinoline right so when you're sewing this is going to look somehow like it's going to look like a big crease you'll be wondering um will i get the other sides right just keep sewing because crinoline, crinoline is um a very uh, one fabric that likes to do shakara okay it's one accessory that likes to do shakara too much so it's always all over the place so you need to you know be holding it down at every point in time right so when you're done with the other side you're going to start uh, stitching the other side you get so crinoline is a very stubborn fabric but guess what it is very humble when it sees iron or it sees heat right it, it's it's humility just comes in play whenever he sees it so if you are struggling with it just take it to the ironing table give it a very good press and keep on sewing okay so that's the, the trip the tip and the trick to working with crinoline okay once you're sewing and it's giving you issues like it's about to give me just put it out of the presser foot take it to the ironing table and give it a very good press make sure that while you're pressing you are steam pressing okay i hope i'm not talking too fast one while you're pressing your crinoline you need to steam press okay or else it's going to burn it is drop by it's like plastic is going to burn if you're not steam pressing and if you don't have a steam press iron just sprinkle water on it and you know press it down so you can see i'm done sewing it and this is what it looks like you can see so i'll go ahead and hold down my fabric together remember please do not so bad do not so plain make sure you attach a feasible interfacing i just have limited i have a little and i want to make it for another tutorial i want to use it for another um dress i'm making and i'm begging you just you know oblige me for this one for this particular one oblige me okay i can't go to get another one did you get so please manage this tutorial like it was this is exactly how to make it make sure that you attach your feasible interfacing okay oblige me for this one i just have a little above a little below one yard left and i need it for something very very urgent and while i was doing this i thought to film it so that you can see Do you get so please indulge me okay for this one indulge or oblige indulge me please so what i'll do is go ahead and pull out um pull out everything to the right side okay once you're done stitching with your half inch allowance you're going to go ahead and pull everything out okay inside i'll just turn it out you know so when you turn it out you go ahead and iron it now when you want to iron make sure that the part you stitched is on the middle you can see I've, I've moved it like so so that the stitch line is on the middle 
you can see so you go ahead and press it give it a very good press you can steam press at this point or sprinkle water on it then while you're at it also go ahead and press on the uh, crinoline now crinoline the edges is very sharp pointy and pokey so you need to be very careful about it so what i like to do about my crinoline is like i use I use fabric to cover the tip of my crinoline, okay, because it, the body is very delicate and if you're wearing an outfit and you're not comfortable, you have things poking and, you know, pricking your body, you're going to be so irritated and I don't like that for my client. I don't like that at all. So I get this um, um, door face satin and I just place the right side facing the crinoline i just go ahead and stitch with one with half inch um symbol allowance so when i'm done i'm just going to cut out the excess thread and trim off that okay so what i'll do is to go ahead and flip it to the right side and i'm going to mark out 1.5 inches okay this is focus okay it's focusing now so just cut out a uh, 1.5 inches right so when you do that you go ahead and turn it to the other side and you're going to go ahead and flip it okay this is just to turn the edges of the crinoline now if you're having difficulty flipping it over just go ahead and trim off the same allowance on your crinoline to like half an inch okay just hold it together and trim it to sorry to quarter of an inch okay or even one eighth of an inch just make sure that you get close and to your thread but don't cut through your sewing thread you get so you just go ahead and fold in half inch like so then folding the other half inch then you go ahead and run a stitch across it you can see what i've done there folding half inch and another half inch right so it's just like bias piping but you know that bias is just a half inch bias so it's not going to cover your crinoline very well so please don't use a bias it's going to just give you issues okay get any type of fabric that you have and do what i have just done here bias is just about half inch or one in half inch yes it's not going to give you that coverage you need to protect you from the pricking and poking of your crinoline so go ahead and do the same thing to the other side place your fabric on it you can see and just go ahead and stitch with your half inch seam allowance now you might be wondering this half inch i'm taking out is it not going to be um affect or alter the length of the crinoline now while uh we progress i'm going to show you because at the tip of your fabric you need an allowance of at least half inch so that by the time you are fixing this structured panel to your um main outfit you're going to you're not going to have the uh, crinoline interfering so that you'll be to be easy for you to use your sewing machine to sew the um structured panel to your dress or even to use your hand needle so you're just going to be sewing fabric to fabric and not crinoline fabric and the other main fabric you get so that half inch is just going to serve as an allowance so that you're going to be stitching directly on the satin fabric and then to your main fabric your crinoline is not going to be getting in the way of that I hope I've explained that correctly. So you can see how I'm also folding the edge of my crinoline just so that it doesn't prick or poke the body. Like I said, it's reducing the crinoline by half inch and thereby giving us half inch at the edge at the both edges of the fabric so that you can have that allowance, okay, to attach this structured panel to your main dress. That way hand tacking or even you're, using, you're even using your machine to tack is not going to be strenuous and difficult now i've also given this uh my fabric a good press okay you can see how beautiful it's looking so you go ahead and put the crinoline the pack of crinoline <laughs> just five pieces guys just five pieces just put it into your fabric okay just push it in just the way you push in elastic through an elastic casing okay but this time you're not going to be using a safety pin just go ahead and push it into the fabric it is going to enter this is actually easy it's actually really really easy so just go ahead and push it into it and when you're done you're going to have something that looks like this you can see now like i said earlier crinoline is a very proud fabric very very proud it can do shakara it can do anyhow okay so you can see how it's roughly knob you know so the only the only organ that it listens to is heat from your pressing iron so you can see all these ruffles rumples and all those uh 
things that is having along just having on my fabric you can see it so by the time i take it to the ironing table and give it a good press it's going to come out humble so you can see it's it's uh, rolling up and i don't like that so just take it to your ironing table so that you go ahead and iron it and it's going to leave flat so just go ahead and do that now so i'm done ironing and guess who is humble now my crinoline <laughs> you can see how humble it is now this is your structure sleeve so you can see just with five pieces of crinoline i i was able to get this much structure now imagine if you're interfacing your gum stay your s stay you can see I'm, i've left it alone and it's standing like this because of the crinoline so if you had added your stay and all of those it's going, it was it's going to give it much more structure so i'm making this for a nursing mom so i don't want to use wording sorry um what's it called remember 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 boning I, do, I don't want to use boning boning acts much structure and it might be hurting the child when she pats the child when she uh, keeps the child's head on her shoulder you get so that's why i thought to use crinoline something that is softer and suitable for a nursing mother okay so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and stitch the crinoline the side of the crinoline to the satin okay to my bridal satin you can see making sure that you are touching the crinoline okay just go ahead and sew let it hold together so that when you're um putting it into when you're fixing it on your main dress the crinoline is not going to be moving around or slipping out of the satin fabric or your uh, fashion fabric or whatever fabric you're using you can use satin dutcher silk any type of fabric that you want to use so this is what I'm doing, stitching the side just to hold down the crinoline and the main fabric together. You can also go ahead and overlock the edges, okay? You can use a matching thread. I just have to do this so that you see that you would have to overlock the edges. The other one is the english mount english weaving that it comes with do call it english mount <laughs> that it comes with so you can see when i press everything is clean so what you can do now is to gather this and attach it to your uh, main fabric you can see so why i said you should leave like that the crinoline piping okay it's just going to reduce half thing so that you don't have bulk in it so you can see i just have my, my main fabric so you're not going to be stitching on the uh, crinoline right so this is what i'll go ahead i'll go and thread my needle then go ahead and sew like so because i want to gather this right so this is one way to attach your structured panel to your dress right so just go ahead and make gather stitches you can see what i'm doing here just with your needle and your thread so i just gonna make a knot at the end of my thread like so i hope you're enjoying the tutorial so just go ahead and knot out your thread then you go and pull it like so so that it's together okay so from here you can now go ahead and attach it to your fabric you can see so this is i think one of the easiest methods to you know do this just go ahead and gather it when you gather it to go and use a sewing machine to stitch it so that the gathered the gathered part doesn't unravel you get so this is it so i'll go ahead and attach this to my main fabric right guys so this is the fabric i'll be attaching the structured panel to okay so this is it it's a deep it's not really deep it's a plunge neckline uh, attached to a man is a mama dress with a uh, back train and the upper body is, is a princess buster that has a plunge neckline and the yoke was made using nude net okay or skin tone net right so this is what i've made i thought to film this but i have a similar tutorial on my channel so what i'll just do is upload the link to that um particular tutorial i'll just post the link in the description box i didn't film this one in case you're looking for the tutorial for this particular dress it wasn't filmed i have a similar tutorial on my channel so that's why i don't i didn't want to do a repetition of something i had already done before right so now this is what you do you're going to go ahead and pleat if you've already used your needle and thread to pleat that's fine but if you want to use your hand to do your um your pleating by yourself that's also very fine okay so i've shown us one method which is using your needle and thread to uh, gather this another method is to use your hands to pleat it down 
you can see so when you pleat it you place it at the mid front okay or the center front then use your pins to hold it down when you hold it down you can use your needle and thread to hand tack or you can sew using your sewing machine okay so either of that just go ahead and you know pleat then you pin it down like so just like this so you go ahead and pin it down then use your needle and thread to tack it down or you could use a sewing machine to hold it down then when you are done you look for any applique or maybe the part of the fabric you are working with i use it to use your uhu gum or your b6000 b7000 or any fabric really you have to put on that place to accessorize it and cover up the part that you use your needle and thread to tack okay that's just how to attach this when you fix it in your hand tack or use a sewing machine then you use your trimmings you know to cover up the places that you tacked on so after doing this to the uh, front i also go ahead and turn it to the back and do the same thing exact same thing guys so that is how to make your structured uh, detail using crinoline and this is how to attach it to your fabric okay so if you found this very helpful which i hope you do please consider subscribing to my channel like and share this video and other videos that i have on my channel so that it gets more visibility okay and till i come your way next time i'm your friend here on youtube nonny and i love you so much stay blessed keep practicing Mwah.